here they have consulted their solicitor. If the moment they come out of the house, they lose the protection of the law. So they said, no, at no cost we will not go. <coughs> and so uh, uh, late Ajit Bin Sahab, and we were, of course, very much concerned and worried. And then at the last resort, I remember it was nearly about after midnight, the Ajit Bin Sahab said, then you should approach the mayor and write a letter, uh, uh, say, and take my remember with you, written reply. Uh, so I telephoned and so I arranged eventually and saw the mayor. And the mayor saw and he said, we have long association with the mosque and we are quite aware of it, rather proud of it, but this is something which is, you are putting me in a very difficult situation. But nevertheless, he, he referred me to Sir William, who was the chairman of the housing committee. And I went. Then Sir William telephoned me next day and he said, we are making an exceptional case, an offer of a new flat to this family, Mr. and Mrs. O'Neill, and they can still say refuse, they can refuse it. So you please ask them, we are as a special case and we do not mention it in the press. So I said to Mr. and Mrs. O'Neill, <laughs> <laughs> and they said, uh, well, uh, I said the flag was in Patni Heath. Right. And they went down and, they, and before that, Mrs. O'Neill, I still remember her the words, and she said, I pray to understand why just for the sake of one person all this fuss is being made. Right. Uh, and he said, before that your family, the, this whatever you believe with the Holy Family, Mia Muzaffar came there before her son. And he said, they say then no, no such pressure was put on us. But I said, why is it for the same for one person such a big fuss is being made? But when she saw the flat and she came and she accepted it, and while she was going and she said, Imam, we will be ever grateful to you. I said, not to me. You the same the same person of the same person for whom you said the same was being made. And then I said to the, so the council, the, my solicitor, and he said, the council has this prerogative, but I am very surprised that the mayor chose to exercise this power for the sake of an Asian, of your father, against an English family. And he said, it's very sad, beyond my, my understanding. <laughs> I'm glad to find Mr. Clare. Yes, sir. I'm glad to find Mr. Clare. I'm glad to find Mr. Clare. Inshallah, tomorrow I'll be with you. What do you mean? Yes, tomorrow, Inshallah. Okay. Uh, Aduna, we had a question that uh, during discussion with uh, one of our Christian friends, <laughs> he said that the Christ <laughs> is uh, perfect. Uh, he was not a sinner in words, as compared to the only performance of and he gave the argument that Muslims are being instructed to invoke the mercy of Allah uh, Muhammad This is the reason he gave. Would you please explain on that? Now, as far as that goes, you are also involved with our prayer. Why are you involved? Allah mercy will be used nice himself. So that uh, puts them in the same packet. But he did all that. So they let them know, but the point is, as far as this argument goes, this falls. Because the Muslims are told to pray for mercy of Allah, for the Holy Prophet of Islam. This is why he is a sinner and Jesus Christ is not a sinner. This is no argument. Because the Muslims are also told to pray for Jesus Christ himself. And then in the Bible, in the New Testament, we find this mention that when somebody said, you are pious, he said, no, I am not, only it is Father who is pious. So he himself denies, what better testimony than that is required for his being, whatever sins you call uh, the nature of sins, be, he himself admits it in so many words, that I am sinful and I am not pure and I am not pious because it's only one, the Father above who is pure and pious. Right? Yes, please. Are you from England? Yes. 
And you can ask your questions later on. Tonight, I said particularly for the benefit of those who are paying a short visit to England. And Dr. Mr. Friend, Mr. Abdullah, Tahir Abdullah, Tahir Abdullah, is it? Tahir Abdullah. Yes. He is from America. So if someone from Germany or somewhere else who is on a short visit to England wants to ask a question or two, I will be happy to answer the questions. Otherwise, we will call it a day and the learners. Yes, please, come on. The learners can ask as many questions later on, please. Eh? Yes. बड़े गुस्से से एक कहा कि इस्लाम उस खिलाफ का मजहब है मैंने अपने इस्ताद के मुताबिक उसको जवाब दिया उसने कहा कि तमाम इस्लामी ममालिक एक दूसरे से दस्तों गरीबान हैं जिस इस्लामी क्लेम का तुम जिक्र करते हो उसकी अमली सूरत का नाम है हम तो मुसलमानों को हर जगह मुश्किल का शिकार करते हैं ऐसे लोगों को कैसे मुतमिन किया जा सकता है What are the arguments which came to your mind as attempting to convince him? I told him that Islam means peace and it is a message of peace and we are here to tell to the people that we are here to give a message of peace to the people. You know, he was not satisfied. The answer to this question requires a much larger treatment. Field which uh, cannot be treated in short answers like yes and no. You have to give a whole film of philosophy and the whole supporting argument for a person, the questioner, to begin to believe and get satisfied. And also, you have to prove your case by examples. So, to nowadays, a Muslim finds himself in a very difficult situation, really because of the warring sections of this faction of Islam and because of their own moral degradation and so many factors for to a foreign observer uh, for a foreign observer it's very difficult to believe that the reality lies differently elsewhere so the question is no doubt difficult but in historic perspective this can be solved to some degree the fact is not only historic perspective, but in the pers in a different perspective of relationship between belief and uh, act upon that belief. This is very important, which will help uh, the, to solve this problem uh, presented by this gentleman. If a people have a good teaching, while they act upon that teaching, they rise to great heights. And uh, if the teaching is bad, while they act upon that teaching, they are found at the lowly, lowliest place on earth because of their teaching. When they leave their teaching, the result is exactly the opposite in both cases. If the teaching was good in the first place, and if for the follower of their teaching have stopped acting upon it, then they would fall rather than rise in station, in achievement, everywhere there will be a decadent society because they are living act upon a good teaching. And vice versa will also be true if the teaching were to was bad teaching originally. The moment they begin to show their backs to that teaching and turn away from it, they will begin to rise and descend. So the effects our desertion of teaching would be exactly the opposite in both cases. Now this is the comparative uh, phenomena I refer to, act upon a teaching and the belief and its relationship. Now we go to the history and in the perspective, perspective of history, history compare Islam with Christianity. There was a time when Islam was truly being acted upon. And all the Christian historians agree with us. The early few centuries. If not in entirety, 
most often than not is